Uh, okay. How do I do the opening? I've never Just done Just introduce him and okay. say what he writes and stuff like that. Aaron, writer of. Yeah. We're here with Jason Aaron, writer of Ghost Rider, Scout, and uh, a few Wolverine issues. Uh, we have a few questions for you, Jason. How are you today? Great, great. All right. You seem to be focusing on a lot of rough writing solo characters right now. Do you have anything in the works or pitches in mind for any sort of team books or more ensemble pieces? Uh, not right now. I, I, I was in the running for a team book just recently, you know, which would have been exciting. But you know, I, I think I'm ready as a writer to do a team book, but it just didn't work out. So for now, I'm still focusing on, you know, on Ghost Rider for, for a long run. Scouts has such a, an extensive cast, it's a little bit like doing a team book. Uh, it's also we have to juggle so many characters, it's not the same that I don't have to feature a lot of in each issue. But you know, it's still been cool to, to work with such a huge cast. We're still kind of expanding that cast. As it the other side is such a personal work for so many people. Cameron Stewart obviously got very deeply involved when he went to Vietnam for research. How did you walk the line between the current storytelling and the timelessness and sensitivity of the material? Did you set out to brutalize war as an opposition to the mainstream media that lionizes such tragedy? Uh, well, when I first started working on this series, it was before there was a war in Iraq. This was back in you know, like two, 2002, or early 2002, when I was first pitching the first version of what would become the other side. I first pitched that war as a relaunch of the novel. So, so it wasn't written in a response to, to you know, the current kind of war in Iraq or the media coverage of that. It was, very, it was always intended to, to be a story about the Vietnam War, inspired by the Vietnam War, inspired by the best I knew and everything. And, and, and I, I always wanted it to be a horror story. It was always meant to be a psychological horror story just because you know, so many guys have already done those straightforward, ground-level views of, of the war. It's been done by guys who are actually there, Doug Murray and Don Lomax, and obviously I could never hope to match those guys doing that, that sort of straightforward story. So that was the main reason that, that I wanted to do, to add those surreal elements and also to do the, the, the split narrative and to look at the war from both perspectives, just to try to bring something different to it. Um, what was your inspiration for Wolverine number 56? It seems so much more of a psychological thriller than a superhero book. What with Wolverine out of costume, struggling against the situation from the low ground? Uh, the main inspiration really was the uh, scene in Silence of the Lambs. Uh, the scene, uh, it's, it's, it's something that happens off camera, but you hear how Hannibal Lecter has made the guy in the cell next to him uh, kill himself just by whispering to him during the night. But just that, that idea is kind of so terrifying that you have a guy who's so dangerous even when he's locked up and can't get to you physically. He can still drive you mad, drive you to kill yourself, drive you to do whatever. And you know, I, I wanted to show Wolverine in that life because if he's a guy who's as, as old as he is and has been around the block that much and has been through so much, then he's got to be a thoroughly dangerous individual, not just with his claws, but just in every way. So that, that, that was the main goal of that story was to show him. And to still be able to do this kind of quirky, gritty, Creator exclusivity has become a point of contention that has changed the dynamic of things between the big two. How are you swinging an issue of Joker's Asylum, the Penguin issue, while you're exclusive with Marvel? Uh, well, it was easy that I, I had written it before I ever signed the issue. Okay. I actually, the, the things I have coming out right now, I have two issues of Hellblazer, for Vertigo, and uh, the Penguin issue. Uh, all those were written like right before or right around the time that I signed the exclusive. You know, and Marvel, Marvel was great about that stuff. They were really accommodating. Obviously, you know, I, I got a, a carve-out clause in my contract that allowed me to continue to do scouts as long as I want to do it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't have signed an exclusive right, if I wasn't allowed to do scouts. Um, kind of, I may sound like a hypocrite, but I've never been a big fan of the exclusives. You know? I like seeing my, my favorite creators being, being able to do whatever they wanted to do. And, and as a creator, I, I like being able to kind of go wherever I want to go and, and do different genres and work with different companies, but, you know, at this point in my career, I, I, there was no way I could turn it down. It was a, 
I was thrilled that they would even offer it to me at that age, that they showed that much confidence in me. And then for them to still allow me to do scouts would be, like, it would be crazy to say that. And last, how does Ghost Rider get out of speeding tickets? Well, what, who's going to have the balls to give Ghost Rider speeding tickets to begin with? I think the logic of your question is flawed. <laughs> that was Jason Aaron. Thank you very much.